what do you think ether is doing well where ola isn't and what do you think ola is doing well where ether isn't तो एथर इंडिया का लार्जेस्ट फास्ट चार्जिंग नेटवर्क रन करता है हम लोग इलेक्ट्रिक स्कूटर बनाते हैं हमारे 1500 सौ स्टेशन है ऑल ओवर इंडिया द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम दैट वी डिस्कवर इज दैट पीपल डोंट इवन नो व्हाट इज एथर वी आर बिल्डिंग अ 10 मिलियन यूनिट्स ऑफ योर फैक्ट्री वी कॉल इट द ओला फ्यूचर फैक्ट्री वी सरवाइव्ड एंड थ्राइव्ड वी हैव अ मच स्ट्रांगर बिजनेस इन इंडिया देन आवर कंपटीशन एक्सेलरेट इंडियाज जर्नी इनटू इलेक्ट्रिफिकेशन बट नॉट जस्ट दैट बट मेक इंडिया अ ग्लोबल हब फॉर फॉर ट्रूली टेकिंग ईवी टू ह्यूमैनिटी स्केल व्हेन आई राइड दिस ऑन अ हायर स्पीड it gives almost 40 to 50 kilometers of range which okay. is not good at all i feel that because company claims 90 kilometers it will surely give in ola the most of the variants have the password to open or on the vehicle so instead of that password and all they can provide us key physical key so it will be helpful by 2030 india's electric vehicle market could reach 100 billion dollars with electric two wheelers accounting for nearly half of this value ether energy and ola electric are battling it out for the crown in the competitive indian market by fighting across product features performance and price but how did they reach here for that we need to go back to the roots of the indian ev industry today's episode is special for us at air tribe this is our 10th episode of scale series which has given us our first successful youtube project so thank you all for your constant support and feedback But before we continue with this case study, I just noticed 90% of you watching this video are not even subscribed. If you like watching our videos, click on that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any new content coming on our YouTube. Now let's get back to our case study. Air quality index reports of India have reached levels of 106, with certain cities like Delhi reaching 167 on average, which is amongst the highest in the world. In the early 2010s. The automotive landscape in India was dominated by traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. These vehicles, though ubiquitous, were significant contributors to urban pollution, traffic congestion, and high running costs. Given all the harmful effects of air pollution, the introduction and adoption of EVs in the country by the masses was becoming an important problem to work on. Thankfully, many entrepreneurs and research labs in India had been working on it for more than a decade. On October 2013, two students from the Department of Engineering Design at IIT Madras were interested with working on a research project to develop a prototype for an EV inside a small room with a team of four people. Their dream was to revolutionize the two-wheeler market by introducing electric vehicles that were not only eco-friendly but also delivered on features and performance. Tarun and Swapnil with a bigger funding of just 5 lakhs from their professors developed a four prototypes within a span of just 12 months and the first working model of the Aether scooter was developed to understand this even better let's travel back in time and imagine yourself as one of the first people to use the Aether scooter you see the ideal customer persona for an electric two wheeler in 2013 was of a daily commuter a person who needs to travel short distances for basic needs and is moderately concerned about the environmental effects of using fuels an ethos prototype scooter was built adhering to this a few years down the line in bangalore another 10 driven enterprise was taking shape ola a leading ride hailing platform founded by bhavish and ankit recognized the pressing need to address urban pollution and the dependence on fossil fuels ola was already the leader in the cab hailing space but that wasn't enough for bhavish thus in 2017 Ola Electric was born with a bold vision to make electric mobility accessible and affordable for the masses. Bhavish wanted to double down on the demands of the EV industry, starting with acquiring a Netherlands-based EV company called Etergo in May 2020. With this acquisition, Ola Electric planned to leverage Etergo's design and engineering capabilities to build its smart electric two-wheeler and speed up its GTM for launch. But how did they go about building their scooters? and what was the difference in their approaches let's take a look ether energy's early growth was mostly fueled by the quality of their product and all the innovations they brought to a scooter a category that hadn't seen much of that for a long while ether is currently able to produce one scooter every 4 minutes unlike ola electric which acquired an existing product ethergo ether had to invest in a dedicated r&d from the very beginning to produce their two wheelers ether's new factory in hosur tamil nadu has a capacity of 1 lakh 10000 scooters and 1.2 lakh battery packs annually with 90% of the components being made in india 
The cells used in the vehicle are housed in an IP67 rated battery pack assembled in a separate unit in the factory. Features like auto hold, which were previously hard to execute in any two wheeler, are implemented with perfection by Aether. Such a fast paced execution of end to end product manufacturing has ensured the delivery of an Aether scooter to every major city in India within one month. It launched its first scooter, Aether 450, in 2018 to positive reviews. They released a big improvement to this in the form of Aether 450X in 2020, which continues to be their top selling model. Aether 450X was the first in the country to have a touchscreen dashboard powered by the Android operating system and the first with Google Maps integrated. Currently, they have three models in their 450 series lineup and they have also introduced a new family scooter called Rista in April 2024. Ola Electric, on the other hand, has built even stronger muscle in manufacturing in just a span of a couple of years. Ola's Future Factory, based in Krishnagiri, Tamil Nadu, is the largest two-wheeler manufacturing factory in the world. It claims to have a capacity of 10 million units annually, with capability to make an EV within two seconds on average. Currently, the facility boasts of 148 automated robots and the most sustainable carbon negative operations. Ola's scooters excel in on-road performance, with a 50% higher battery strength achieving top speeds of 100 to 120 km per hour and offering a much higher distance coverage than Aether. Ola's choice to use IPM motors as opposed to the BLDC motors used by Aether contributes to their superior performance. Ola's first scooters were S1 and S1 Pro. They currently offer three variants in S1 Air, S1 X and S1 Pro, with the later being the top tele model. The Ola S1 Pro and Aether 450X the top models from each company are good scooters for anyone looking to get started with an EV. Let's take a look at how they compare with each other. What's your name? Chandan. Looks like you have an Ola scooter. Yeah. Why did you buy an Ola but versus an Aether? Like compared to price, this uh, Aether, it will cost like uh, 2 lakhs or 1 lakh 80 for the top end, where I will get uh, like 100 to 110 range in the normal mode. So while coming to Ola, uh, I am getting 142 range in normal mode. I saw you use Aether. Yes. I was wondering why you decided to buy Aether versus Ola. So there were some cases in the last year where uh, I found that there were so many Ola scooters which were simply standing in the sunlight and uh, a simple short circuit happened and uh, it caught fire. So and uh, secondly, I don't like its looks to be very honest. It's very curvy. Uh, being a boy, uh, I don't like that curvy look at all. So that is why I went for this. While Aether had a head start in the EV scooter category, some people believe their design language is getting pretty old now. Ola, on the other hand, benefited from the design language they inherited from their Etergo team and capitalized even more by releasing their scooters in a series of bold and vibrant colors which seem to have found great acceptance among the masses. You must be wondering how these companies acquired customers and create awareness for their brands. While there is a lot that they have done, I will focus on only three. Starting with customer acquisition. Aether's approach has been more grounded in people experiencing their product before ordering them. They have offered test rides from the very beginning. The process for someone buying an Aether scooter kickstarts by reserving one through their app or website. The next step is to book the scooter with a refundable amount of Rs. 2500. On the other hand, Ola, which had tens of millions of users on its ride hailing app, leveraged its massive distribution to launch their electric line of scooters. You must have received those Ola scooter notifications on your Ola app almost every day, just like I did. They did a massive launch with a pre booking initiative where users could reserve an e scooter with a refundable deposit of just Rs. 499 generating huge early interest and demand. Physical Experience Centers Aether Energy, which initially took the path of experience centers, has also expanded further with dealership model. Now, they have more than 175 experience centers across 100 cities in India, with plans to expand to 120 cities and 200 outlets by the end of financial year 2024. Ola has also rapidly expanded its presence with approximately 935 plus experience centers and 392 service centers across India, providing comprehensive customer support and enhancing brand accessibility. Their strategy includes integrating their e-scooters with their ride-hailing business, targeting both individual buyers and fleet operators, creating a robust and diversified customer base. Media Presence 
Ether Energy focuses on fostering a strong community engagement through user interactions, events, and active feedback. CEO Tarun Mehta plays a crucial role in this strategy, frequently appearing on podcasts and social media to discuss the benefits and impact of Ether's products. This helped a lot in enhancing brand trust and loyalty. They take a strong stance on educating potential customers about the advantages of electric vehicles, addressing concerns like range anxiety and highlighting long-term cost benefits. In terms of brand awareness, CEO Bhavis Agarwal's sometimes bold but nevertheless engaging social media presence drove a lot of visibility for his electric scooter brand. Whether it was dancing to the tunes of Bollywood songs in front of the Ola S1 or being absolutely unapologetic when it came to the brand image as a leader who just wants to win. All of this helped build a strong emotional connection with his target customers. But all of these tactics and strategies make sense if they convert to actual sales. So let's talk about the financials of the two companies and how they compare with each other. Electric two-wheeler retail sales are at an all-time high in India in 2024, led by Ola Electric, while other leading automakers like TVS Motor, Bajaj Auto and Ather Energy have also shown outstanding growth. The electric two-wheeler industry recorded sales of 81,963 vehicles in February 2024, up from 66,053 vehicles sold in February 2023, marking a 24% year-on-year growth. Ola Electric's strong performance is reflected in the consistent monthly sales growth, reaching over 33,700 units in February 2024 alone. The company reported a year-on-year growth of 91%, with sales increasing from 17,616 vehicles in February 2023 to 33,722 vehicles in February 2024. Ethel Energy, on the other hand, commands a smaller but notable share of approximately 11 to 12 percent. Ether retailed 8,983 electric two-wheelers in February 2024, accounting for an 11 percent market share. The company reported a month-on-month -month decline of 4 percent amid increased competition. If we have to compare these two companies in terms of revenue, Ola Electric has announced its financial results for financial year 2023, with revenue of 2,782 crores compared to 456 crores the year before. This growth was due to strong electric two-wheeler sales in 2022. The IPO-bound company's net loss during financial year 2023 came in at 1,472 crores against a loss of 784 crores in financial year 2022. Ather Energy's revenue from operations in 2023 was 4.5 times higher than in 2022 reaching 1,784 crores in the fiscal year ending March 2023, compared to 408.5 crores in 2022. However, the company's total expenses also more than tripled from 757.9 crores in 2022 to 2,670.6 crores in 2023, resulting in a loss of 864.5 crores in 2023 alone, compared to 344 crores in 2022. In summary, Ola Electric is leading the market by a significant margin, while Ather Energy, although trailing, remains a key player with a consistent market presence and growth strategy. With that, we come to the end of 10th episode of Scale by Air Tribe. Thank you for sticking with us until now. If you had the opportunity, what would you rather buy, Ola or Ather? Do let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next episode.